Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I am very excited to start diving into more videos on different sex and relationships topics, but I also wanna talk about pregnancy just a little bit more, if you will <laughs> indulge me. So I recently had a baby and experienced the whole pregnancy and birth Thing. And a while ago, one of my patrons, Lisa, reached out with some ideas for videos that she wanted to help research and write, and one of them was all about pregnancy in animals, mammals to be specific, and I was so down to explore this subject. The animal world in the realm of sex and mating is something I really don't know a lot about, but I'm fascinated by, so I am really excited to dive into this topic with you and share everything that I I've learned. Every species will do what it can to maximize its success in its reproductive process, even humans. Things like craving specific foods and the nesting instinct in pregnancy. But what about for other mammals? The animal kingdom is full of weird and wonderful creatures and the way they reproduce is fascinating, from four-headed penises to natural sperm storage. Just FYI, I'm going to be using the terms male and female to describe these animals' reproductive categories. Obviously, we can't ask them what their genders are and how they identify, so going to be using male and female as that is what is in the science. Thanks so much to Lisa for researching this video. As I mentioned, she is a patron of mine and she is a disabled scientist and one of her favorite topics is reproduction and she has found some amazing, amazing facts for us. And she's also introduced me to some of my new favorite terms and I am excited to share them with you as we get into this video. Okay. Okay, so it's time to get nerdy about mammal reproduction and science. The basics. There are three ways mammals reproduce. Number one, eutherians, aka placental mammals. This is like humans and elephants, and they have a placenta that provides nutrients to the embryo in the uterus. Number two, egg-laying monotremes. Their name is pretty self-explanatory. These are mammals that lay eggs. But there are only five species that do this, the duck-billed platypus and four species of echidna, which are anteaters. Number three, pouched marsupials. These mammals have very short pregnancies, and after birth, the young will climb up into the mother's fur and into a pouch and find a nipple and suckle. So this is like kangaroos and opossums. Okay, so let's first talk about eutherian mammals, starting with the males. As you'll likely know, they have two different reproductive organs, the penis and the testes. However, these organs can be external to the body, like in humans, or internal and comes out at appropriate times, like a dog's penis, which is covered by a penis penile sheath except for when mating. It's a bit of a scientific mystery why external testes have evolved in some mammals. There's a bit of a cost versus benefit evolutionary calculation going on here. Keeping the sperm and testes at a cooler temperature outweighed the risk of damage as they were external, and so voila, the scrotum is born. Now the female eutherians. Again, there are two main sections. You've got the vagina, cervix, and uterus, and the ovaries and fallopian tubes. And these are always internal. When it comes to periods, only humans, great apes, and bats have them. All other female eutherians will reabsorb the egg in their estrus cycle. Not all mammals have a menstrual cycle the way that humans do, and the overarching term for the whole cycle thing in mammals is the estrus cycle. This is something I recently learned. <laughs> and pregnancy length in mammals is highly varied. Nine months for humans, 19 days for mice, and almost two years for elephants. So all of that is vaguely familiar, but now let's move on to some of the more unusual things, at least from a human perspective. What even is normal? I don't know anymore. I don't know. The spotted hyena and the pseudo penis. So the female spotted hyena is eutherian and they have a clitoris that is shaped and positioned to be almost identical to the male penis and this is called a pseudo penis. It can become erect and is used for things like peeing, sex, and birth. The labia also fused and form a pseudoscrotum. They also don't have an external vaginal opening. The distinction between the male and the female genitalia is that females have thicker and shorter genitalia with more rounded glands. The female retracts her clitoris during mating and the male enters the created gap. And both male and female hyenas have penile spines that assist in this process. And as the females have to actively retract their clitoris, this blocks the ability of forced mating. Moving on to egg 
ring laying mammals. This group of mammals are known as monotremes, which translates to single opening. This relates to a single hole they have known as the cloaca, and this is used for all of the things poo, pee, sex. How efficient. They have the reproductive characteristics of lizards, like the cloaca and egg laying, but also mammals, like mammary glands. So scientists bloody love them because this is pretty unique. All monotremes are found in Australia, which is a unique ecosystem in its own right. It's probably likely that there was some sort of evolutionary advantage to the development of egg laying over a mammalian estrus cycle. One of the advantages of egg laying, for example, in birds means that the male and the female bird can care for the offspring and the female doesn't have to carry multiple eggs inside her body and oh boy how do I wish I could have shared pregnancy with Dan. So let's talk about the male echidnas. This little guy looks perfectly familiar but his genitalia has evolved into what has been named in biological circles as the weirdest mammalian penis. Well done. <laughs> Big applause. So they do have a penis, but this is only used for semen and they urinate out of their cloaca. The echidna penis is actually two separate penises joined together. The whole penis has one shaft, but four heads known as rosettes, which are used interchangeably during mating. Whichever two heads were involved in the last mating get a little rest whilst the other two get busy and then they swap again. Here's a drawing of it as I'm not sure I can show you a photo of a four-headed penis on YouTube, even if it is educational, but you can Google it if you're curious. So this allows males to maximize their total amount of time spent mating because they don't have to rest in between, therefore increasing their chances of success. Most of the time their testes are internal rather than external and they undergo a seasonal emergence during winter. And seasonal emergence is one of my new favorite terms. Hmm. Now time to look at the females. Once fertilized, the female monotreme develops an embryo inside of the uterus for two thirds of the gestation time. While in the uterus, the egg has a softer shell which allows nutrients to pass between the mother and the child. Then they lay the egg which will hatch around 10 days later. The young monotremes are known as puggles and they are very underdeveloped when they are born compared to the likes of a human baby. And human babies, let me tell you, are also very underdeveloped when they are born. And the female monotreme doesn't actually have nipples but has openings on their skin which act as mammary glands. And the newly hatched puggle will use its sense of smell to locate the mammary glands. So that's the eutherians and the egg laying mammals. And we'll get onto the pouch marsupials in a bit, but first there's some other weird and fascinating things about mammal reproduction that I want to share. First up, super Fetation. Superfetation is the holding of embryos at different stages of development in one uterus. It can be found as an anomaly in mammals, including humans. This is when there's a gestational difference in age of non-identical twins, at most a two weeks difference. And this occurs in about 0.3% of pregnancies that are more than one fetus. But it is a natural part of reproduction in only these five species. So superfetation comes hand in hand with another concept called delayed implantation, which we will come to, which allows the female to practice cryptic polyandry. And there is another term that I love. Cryptic polyandry. Cryptic polyandry is the reproductive ability to hide the paternity of your young. This prevents males of the same species from committing infanticide of the young that is not theirs because they don't know whose is whose. So when conception occurs in one of these species during an already active pregnancy, it leads the uterus to be holding embryos at different stages of development that may have different fathers. So another method used for cryptic polyandry, as I mentioned, is delayed implantation. Delayed implantation is when the embryo doesn't immediately implant in the uterus, basically hitting pause. The embryo can be held in the uterus for up to 11 months, and this happens in 2% of mammals. The main advantage of delayed implantation is that it allows for births and postnatal development to happen in the most favorable conditions. For example, the European badger will hold embryos in the uterus until December to February when they will implant triggered by the shorter length of day. This means that the female can mate multiple times with many, many partners, increasing the likelihood of the young being healthy and reducing the likelihood of infanticide by other males. So from delayed implantation to delayed fertilization, AKA sperm storage. Many female animals practice the process of sperm storage, which is the holding of unfertilized sperm 
somewhere in the reproductive system. For example, us humans can store sperm that has been released inside for up to five days. However, some sharks, up to two years. The female bat, however, is the leader in the mammalian world for sperm storage. They can store and fertilize sperm inside their uterus for up to six months. The process of sperm storage is critical to the marsupial species known as Antichinus. Mating occurs in a restricted three week period once per year in late winter before the female has even ovulated yet. Copulation can occur for eight to 12 hours. That means, yes, they are having sex for eight to 12 hours hours. And after the mating period, few, if any, sperm remain in the male reproductive tract. The female will then store the sperm in a special organ known as the storage crypt for up to two weeks. Storage crypt, another one of my new favorite terms. Now here's the real kicker with this species. After the mating period and before the female has ovulated, the entire male population dies due to stress-induced suppression of the immune system. What the actual fuck? And then the female will ovulate shortly after this period and they've got a whole bank of sperm in that storage crypt ready to go. So let's take a look at what is going on with some other marsupials. Marsupials have a short gestation time relative to other mammals, around eight to 24 days. After they are born, they instinctively crawl up their mother's fur and find a teat, where they will remain for the rest of the gestational period, which varies from species to species. Because of this form of gestation, a marsupial can become pregnant many times in succession, resulting in multiple joeys that are all on a teat, but at different stages of development which is where asynchronous concurrent lactation comes in. This is the ability of a female marsupial to provide milk to multiple joeys all at different stages of development. The milk is provided in three separate stages, early, mid, and late lactation. The Tamar wallaby is the most studied marsupial in this area. They have four nipples or teats and each one can provide milk at the appropriate developmental level for each joey. Think of it as each joey is allocated a nipple where they stay until they are ready to leave the pouch. And all of the different nutrients that they need from that milk will change over time for that one joey on that one teat. Okay, moving on to possibly one of my favorite biological features, and that is cryptic female choice. Honestly, the terms for this area, love it, love it. Excellent terms. <laughs> so cryptic female choice is the female's ability to choose the father of their offspring, and it comes in a few forms. The ability of some species to choose who they mate, such as the spotted hyenas, and dating in humans. What fun. <laughs> Another way is masking their estrus cycle, essentially hiding the fact that they are fertile. Sperm ejection. Some females can discard sperm by ejecting it. Outside of mammals, the female cricket can mate multiple times and then discard the sperm of the unpreferred males and retain the sperm of the preferred mate. Destroying stored sperm by various means. This could be by raising pH or releasing certain chemicals. And the mating plug. In various mammals, the male can leave behind a plug in the female reproductive tract, and this prevents mating with other males. However, some females have adapted to the ability to choose which plugs remain in place. Excellent, excellent work, ladies. And maybe the ultimate method of cryptic female choice, the Bruce effect. So when an already pregnant female rodent is exposed to the scent of an unfamiliar male, she can choose to terminate her pregnancy. This only works before implantation in mice, but other species can terminate even a late term pregnancy. So the advantage of this for the female is that they can choose the paternity of their offspring in favor of the fittest mate. But there are also some advantages to the males. It allows them to sabotage the pregnancy of a male competitor and return the female to a first fertile state more quickly. And it maintains the male social status with more dominant males leaving more scent markings. This has been an absolute adventure. I have only scratched the surface here. As I mentioned, I've learned all of this stuff new too. Thank you so much to Lisa. Let me know in the comments some of your favorite animal, mammal, reproductive sex facts. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.